Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Sit down and try to make yourself comfortable. Yes, it is quite warm in here, but don't worry about it. Because in just a moment, we'll bring you a tale that will chill your blood. A tale of black magic that may have begun centuries ago, but which takes place today. A tale in which one of the dark powers of the pit is released on the campus of a Midwestern university. Did you hear that? It's just the wind. No, it's not. It's something else. I don't hear anything. I do. A kind of humming, singing sound. Look over there, near Brewster Hall. It's only a shadow. It's moving. It's coming this way. Oh, now stop it, Debbie. You're getting yourself all It's up. coming this way. Beth, it's got eyes. It's that thing I saw in the mirror. Get out of here. Run. Debbie, wait. Oh, don't go that way. This way. Over toward me. mystery drama, The Sending, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Robert Newman and stars Mandel Kramer and Marion Seldes. Is there such a thing as black magic? The ancients thought there was. For centuries, there were those who were willing to trade their souls for the power to call up and control the dark forces of the pit. To what end? Sometimes for power or wealth. Sometimes, as in this tale, to achieve eternal youth, eternal life. But, as we will see, there is always great danger involved. And the price is always high and usually paid in blood. Our spine tingler begins in a large, rambling house on the edge of the campus of a Midwestern university. A gray-haired woman, strangely shrunken, but with intense, gleaming eyes, sits in a chair in a sparsely furnished room, waiting and listening. Arnold? Yes? Where are you? You know where I am, in my room. Hello, Mia. How are you? You know that, too. Where have you been? At a faculty meeting and then at my office. And you couldn't get home before this? Well, I had several conferences. I had to arrange my schedule. That's what you said yesterday. Mia, it always takes a few days when you're starting in a new place. Why are you so impatient? Why? Have you forgotten how I get when my time is running out? Do you realize I've only got about two weeks left? I told you to relax, Mia. Classes will be starting tomorrow, and you know how quickly I can work when I have to. I should have someone for you within a few days. So, to sum up our first session, what we're dealing with, then, is a tradition that goes back to the dawn of time. Man's belief that he can control not the forces of nature, but the forces that shape nature and can give him power over other men, and even over life and death. That will be all for today. You have your reading list and your assignment for next time. However, if any of you are interested in any of the many fields I covered in my outline, by all means, come talk to me, and I'll give you some additional reading for a special report. Well, what do you think, Beth? Well, it was quite a lecture. I think it's going to be very interesting. I'm not talking about the course. I'm talking about him. He's really... Something, isn't he? Oh, come on, Debbie. He's married, isn't he? Oh, sure he is. All the really attractive ones are. But his wife is about 20 years older than he is. Not only that, but she's not well. How do you know that? Well, I made it my business to find out. Since he just got here, it wasn't easy. But if you really want something... Debbie. <laughs> okay. There's no reason why you should care. You've got someone for yourself. If you're talking about Bill, I haven't got him. 
He just has a room across the hall from me. Which he made a point of getting last spring. So? So? Give me a hand. Come on up and talk to Lansing with me. All right. As a matter of fact, I was going to do it anyway. I thought I might do one of those special reports. Oh, great. Then you talk to him and I'll tag along. Okay. Uh, Professor Lansing? Yes? I'm Beth Howard. I'd like to do one of the special reports you talked about. Oh, I'm delighted, Miss Howard. It usually takes three or four sessions before anyone volunteers. Was there something you were particularly interested in? Well, yes, the tarot. Mm, I should have known. That's usually one of the first assignments to be requested. Uh, tell me, do you have a set of tarot cards? No, I haven't. Well, after you do your report, I'm sure the bookstore will have to order them. But in the meantime, if you'll stop by my office this afternoon, I'll give you my set and also a supplementary reading list. Oh, thank you, Professor. Not at all. Uh, what about your friend? I'm sorry, I, I don't believe I know your name. Debbie Ross. Would you like to take on one of the special assignments too, Miss Ross? Oh, well, not right now, Professor, but I'll probably ask for one after the next session or two. But in the meantime, I I wanted to tell you that I, I think the course is absolutely fascinating. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Ross. Today's lecture was very general, of course, an attempt to indicate approach and sketch in background, but I hope you'll continue to find it interesting. Oh, I'm sure I will. All right, Mia. I told you you could relax, and you can. You've got one? I have several. Two in particular. I'm sure you'll be delighted with either one of them. You're sure? Mia, yeah, haven't I done it often enough so that I can tell? Yes, we both have, but Arnold, it'll have to be soon, or I'll be so weak. I won't be able to help. Don't worry, Mia. It will be soon. Not more than another few days. <laughs> power that ever was or will be is here now. Yes? Who is it? Who would you like it to be? Hi. Hi, yourself. So you're into the tarot. How did you know that? I heard you're intoning. Oh, yes. But how did you know that that had anything to do with the tarot? I'm not exactly an ignoramus, but I did a lot of reading in it on my own and in practically everything that was related to it. You never cease to astonish me. Yes, I'm quite an astonishing guy. Uh Uh-huh. But how come you're not just studying it, but working with the cards? It's for Professor Lansing's course. I'm doing a special report for him. Oh, good old witchcraft one, two. Now, come on, Bill. We were a little surprised when we heard he was going to be giving it. No, I don't know why we should have been. Quite a few of the universities are giving courses like it. After all, this is the age of Aquarius. It happens to be a very interesting course. Yeah, sure it is. And Lansing's a fascinating man. Yes, he is. You know him? I've never met him officially, but I've seen him at the pool. The pool? Yeah, he's a very good swimmer. Oh, I'll have to tell that to Debbie. Why? Well, she's taking the course, too. And she's got quite a thing about him. Yeah, well, just tell her to watch your step. Oh, because he's married? No, because I've got a funny feeling about him. Yes, come in. Good afternoon, Professor Lansing. Good afternoon. It's uh, Miss Ross, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I hope this is all right, my coming here to your office. Well, that's what I'm here for. What can I do for you? Well... I told you after your first lecture that one of these days I'd like to do one of your special reports. Yes, I remember. And uh, you're ready to do one now, are you? I've gotten pretty well squared away in all my other courses, so I do have time for it. Well, I'm delighted. Now, is there any area that you're particularly interested in? Uh, No. Oh, well, then how about divination? Foretelling the future? That's right. That's a big field, isn't it? Yes, it is. There must be a hundred ways people have used to look into the future. I'll give you a reading list on it, and uh, why don't I give you this, too? What's that? It's called a speculum. It's an old bronze mirror. What a fascinating-looking thing. Yes, it is, isn't it? I got it in Paris years ago. I've never been able to date it, but it's probably Roman, Mithraic. But what is this strange-looking head on it? That's Kronos, or Eternal Time. He was an important figure in the mysteries of Mithra. And 
And what do I do with it? Well, it was undoubtedly used not just in Roman times, but all through the Middle Ages to foretell the future by looking into a mirror. Oh. Why don't you try it? You'll find the technique described in Zeller, one of the first books on the reading list. Oh, it sounds very exciting. Thank you very much, Professor. Not at all. It's a very rare and unusual thing, so I wouldn't give it to just anyone. But I know you'll take good care of it. And we'll all be looking forward to your report. Mia, I've got the girl. One of the two I told you about. Her name is Debbie Ross. She has the mirror? I just gave it to her. Good. When can we do it? You are impatient, aren't you? Yes. All right. We'll do it tonight. I hope you're approaching the occult with a proper amount of skepticism, said Professor Lansing. But somehow he didn't sound very skeptical himself just now. Exactly what are he and his wife planning to do tonight? And what does that have to do with the mirror he gave Debbie? We'll find out shortly. <laughs> Unto all things, there is a season. And of course, the proper time for one of the darkest aspects of the occult black magic is night. Well, it's night now about 10 o'clock, and Beth Howard has just arrived at Debbie's rooming house, which is only a block or so from the campus. I was afraid you weren't coming. Well, you said it was important that you had something to show me. I have. Look. Oh, wow. What is it? A speculum. What's that? An old bronze mirror, probably Roman. Where did you get it? (laughs) From Professor Lansing. I went to see him this afternoon. Beth, I think he likes me. He said he wouldn't give it to just anyone. Mm, I'm sure he wouldn't. It's a very unusual thing. What are you supposed to do with it? Well, it's all here in this book. The room should be dark, lit only by one candle. And you sit with your back to the candle, and you stare into the mirror, keeping your mind a blank. Ah, uh-huh. have you done it yet? No. Well, I, I started to, and I... I felt a little funny about it. Uh, funny how? Just funny. It's a wonderful looking thing, but but it's pretty weird. You know, all those figures around the edge of it. Mm. Is that why you called me? Yes. I thought maybe you wouldn't mind staying here with me while I tried it. Oh, of course I don't mind. Are you going to do it now? Oh, yes. I'll light the candle. Get the light switch. All right. It's strange, but I know how you feel. I felt very much the same way when I was working with the tarot cards. We don't really believe in any of the things we're doing, but for centuries, people did believe in them. Keep quiet. I'm going to look and concentrate. All right. Well, do you see anything? I don't know. I think maybe... What do you see? Wait, I'm not sure... It's probably just a shadow, but I... I do think I see something in there. Oh, what does it look like? Hard to tell. It's dark, very dark and shapeless. It's moving. It's turning. Oh, Beth. It's got eyes flaming. Eyes. Oh, come on now, Debbie. It's, fast. it's looking at me... Put on the light, Beth. I'm not going to look anymore, okay? Oh. You, you really did think you saw something? Yes. Well, well, as you said, it was probably just a shadow. The, the candle flickering. You really are shook up, aren't you? Yes, I am. You want to come over to my place and stay overnight with me? Well, could I? Of course. Bill's out, too, giving a seminar, but he should be back soon. And, and if my light's on, he'll come in for a while. Oh, good. Just let me get my coat and... And wrap this up again. You're taking the mirror? Oh, I better. It may be a scary thing, but it's very valuable, and I said I'd take care of it. All right, Mia. Is it time? 
Yes. Let's go into my study. You'll have to help me. Of course. Take my arm. Oh. Slowly, then. Arnold, I really am weak. I've never felt so weak before. It doesn't matter. We'll all be over in a little while. Here, now, sit down. Yes. I'll get the box. Here, now, hold it while I light the incense. I have it. Where do you think she is? What is the difference? She has the mirror. No matter where she is, it will find her. Are you ready? Yes. Give me the rod. Here. All right. Now, you'll be quick with the theme when I need it. Yes. Here or wherever you are, hear me. Do you hear me, Peor? With this rod, and in the names of Gagarim, Amartis, Algar, and Algasta, I summon thee. It, it's coming, Arnold. There it is. Over there. I see it. Take the rod and give me the arm. Why must it be wrapped this way? You know why. It must be touched until it's needed. Quickly, hurry. Yes. Stay where you are. I hold the Arthim, whose hilt is signed with the seal of Solomon, and which is more powerful than you are. Now hearken to me. We have a life for you. You will know her as you always have before, because she has your mirror. I give her to you, and thus buy another year of life for Mia. Is it agreed? Good. Be gone, then, and take her. And then fulfill your part of the bargain. Gone. Yes. Are you all right? Yes. Oh. Yes. Somehow I always forget how much it takes out of me. Yeah. Here's the art him. Wrap it up again carefully. I'll get us both some brandy. <laughs> Why are you going this way? Well, I thought we'd cut across the campus. Why? You're still upset, aren't you? Yes. Look, I'm not going to say it's silly. I've gotten anxious myself at times when there was no real reason for it. But you know the whole thing was just your imagination. You've been doing a lot of reading about things that are strange, and, and you think you saw something in the mirror. Probably one of those heads that are on it. I guess you're right. I'm sure I am. But if it's going to affect you this way, maybe you should give up the course altogether. No, that seems silly. Besides, you always claim one of my troubles was I was too literal. I didn't have any imagination. Well, it's beginning to look as if I was wrong. <laughs> well, why don't we talk to Bill about it? It turns out he knows a lot about this sort of thing. How come? Well, he got interested in it through his work in English Lit. The tarot, when he was writing a paper on the wasteland, and, and black magic when he was doing an analysis of the Gothic novels. <laughs> you two are really an item, aren't you? I don't know what you mean. Oh, of course you do. You never see anyone else. Neither does he. Well, I, I like him, and he likes me. You just like him? <laughs> okay. I more than like him. If he asked me to marry him, I'd do it in a minute. He will. How do you know? I just think he will. Well, it's not all that simple. He's just an instructor now, and it'll be a while before he gets his... Uh... What is it? Don't you hear that? Oh, it, it, it's just the wind. No, it isn't. It's something else. I don't hear anything. Well, I do. A kind of humming, singing sound. <gasps> Look, over there. Near Booster Hall. Oh, it's only a shadow. Oh, it's moving. It's coming this way. No, no, stop it, Debbie. You're getting yourself all worked up about oh, nothing. It's coming this way. It's got eyes. It's that thing I saw in the mirror. Come on. 
Run, Debbie, wait. If you're going to run, don't go that way. I'll come this way. Over towards me. take you over to the infirmary. What? Oh, Bill. Yes. How are you? I, I don't know. I, I, what happened? I'm not sure. I found you lying on the sidewalk at the edge of the campus. I brought you up here to your room. Oh, my head hurts. I'm not surprised. You got a nasty bump. You must have fallen and banged it. Now get a wet towel. I'll put on a compress. No, no, wait. Debbie! What happened to Debbie? Debbie? Yes, she was with me. We, we were going across the campus when suddenly we saw it. The, the thing from the mirror. And, and we started to run and... Wait a minute, wait a minute. What thing? I told you, the thing from the mirror. It came after us. After her. And I heard her scream. Oh, Bill. Bill, you've got to go look for her. Yeah, sure. Sure. Look, let me, let me get that... Contract. No, I'm all right. You've got to go find her. All right, now quiet down, Beth. And when I found you, you were all alone. Because I ran one way toward the house here, and she ran the other, and, and it was after... You don't believe me. Well, it's a little hard when I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, what was this thing that came after you, and, and what was the mirror? The mirror that Professor Lansing gave her. She was going to do a report for him on divination, like... Like the one I'm doing on the tarot and... All right, now, will, will you hold it a minute? When, when I left you to go to my seminar, you were still here. Uh-huh. You said you were going to stay here and do some reading. Right, and, and then Debbie called and asked me to come to her place, and she said she had something to show me. Yeah, the mirror. Yes, an old bronze one, a speculum. Speculum, she called it. She was supposed to look into it, describe what she saw. Yeah, specu uh, speculomancy. That's right, but she felt funny about it. Nervous, so she wanted me there while she did it. Yeah, and and did she do it? Yes, yes. We we put out the light and lit a candle, and and she saw. Well, no, no. She thought she saw something in it, a a dark shape with flaming eyes, and and that made her more jumpy than ever. So I told her to come back here and stay overnight with me. Mm -hmm. So you started to walk across the campus together. That's right, and there was no one around, and. And then we heard something, a, a strange sound. The wind. Oh, that's what I thought, too, at first. But it wasn't. It was a kind of a musical note. And and then we saw it, this dark shape. Did she see it, or did you? We both did. She saw it first, and... Bill, you think I just imagined it? Oh, don't you? <gasps> I don't know. Well, let's go back over it again. Huh? She was tense. Nervous, thought she saw something in the mirror, and that made her more nervous. So she decided to come over here with you. Then she saw something, a shadow of some sort, which she identified with the thing she thought she'd seen in the mirror. But I saw it too, Bill. After she described it to you. But I'm sure I did see it. It was it was huge, dark, and... All right, if I did imagine it, where's Debbie? She's probably back in her room, embarrassed to death at the fuss she made. Well, I suppose that's possible. When I think about it, it does sound a little silly. I mean, two grown women getting hysterical. But, you know, would you call her and make sure? Her, her number's in the book next to the phone. Sure. Let's see. Mm, here we are. <laughs> you know, I think maybe she ought to come over here anyway so that we can talk about this, because if the two of you are going to get all worked up about that ridiculous course of land... It's not ridiculous. It's very interesting, just because we got a little silly about it. Well? Well, there's no answer. Bill, I, I, don't, I don't like this. I think we should go and look for her. Go look where? If she's not in a room and she didn't come up here, she could be anywhere. I mean, with another friend. I don't care. I still want to look for her. I'll show you where it happened, where we started running and... and, well, what, and... what good will that do, unless she fell and hurt herself also? Like, I'll tell you what. I'll call the campus police and see if they came across her or heard or saw anything. All right. 
Hello, security. This is William Taylor of the English Department. Uh, this is a rather odd call, but I wonder if any of your men ran into an undergraduate by the name of Debbie Ross within the last hour or so. Yeah, well, another student, uh, uh, Beth Howard, was with her. They were walking across campus, and they were frightened by something. No, no, it, it wasn't a man. It was, uh... What? Oh, no. Where was this? I see. All right. I'll come right over. Bill? What is it? One of the guards found her about ten minutes ago. What do you mean, found her? Found her body in the bushes near Brewster Hall. She's dead. Man is a rational animal. And we always look for a rational explanation of anything that puzzles us. But what if there is no rational explanation for it? Do we admit that there may be things we don't know about? Things that we've refused to recognize because the idea terrifies us? Debbie Ross is dead. But how did she die? It's several days later. Many things have happened in that time. There have been questions, investigations, explanations, and recriminations. There has also been a funeral. As far as Beth is concerned, that is the only thing that really mattered. That and what has happened between her and Bill. Yes? Who is it? Bill. Oh. Just a second. Hi. So you're still locking your door? Yes. Which is very silly of me. All right, I didn't say that. It's certainly understandable. Uh-huh. But still pretty childish. You've been treating me as if I were a hysterical female. No, that's not true. I've been perfectly willing to talk to you about it, but you know what the facts are. Mm, of course. There were no marks on Debbie's body, at least none that could have killed her. She died of a heart attack. That's right. But they checked back on the physical she took when she was admitted here, and there was nothing wrong with her heart. Look, Bill, we've been through this before. Debbie thought she saw something in the mirror. Thought she saw it again out on that campus, and that made me think I saw it, too. Look, darling. Don't call me, darling. Why not? Because I don't want you to. When I first signed up for the course, you teased me about it, even though you've done a lot of reading in that same field yourself. I didn't tease Yes, you, you did, Bill. And you made a few remarks about Lansing, saying you had a funny feeling about him. But now... I still have a funny feeling about him. As a matter of fact, I feel funnier about him now than ever. Why? Well, because I did a little checking up on him this afternoon. You know, we taught the same course at State last year. Yes, I know. What of it? Well, there was an incident there that was very similar to what happened to Debbie. I mean, a student, a a member of the swimming team, and, and therefore presumably very healthy, died suddenly one night of a heart attack. One of his students? No. Now, that's the only difference. He, he wasn't one of Lansing's students. Well, then why do you call it similar? And, and why are you making a point of it? If, if there was no connection between them... Look, I, I don't know if there was or not, but I thought perhaps I ought to look into it a little further. How? Well, I'm going to go see Lansing. I'm going to talk to him. No, no, Bill. Why not? Because I feel odd about him, too. I, I have ever since Debbie died, and I'm afraid... Good afternoon. Is Professor Lansing at home? Yes, he is. Do you think I could see him? My name's Taylor, Bill Taylor, and I'm an instructor in the English department. I stopped by his office, but he wasn't there. No, he's been very upset about the death of his student, so he's been working at home. I see. It was an unfortunate thing. Yes, it was. Uh, You're not Mrs. Lansing, are you? Yes, I am. Why? Why? Oh, uh, well, it's, it's just that I thought, uh, I heard... That uh, I wasn't well? Yes, that's right. I wasn't, but I'm fine now. 
You want to come with me? I'm sure Arnold will be glad to talk to you. Thank you. Yes? Arnold, this is Mr. Taylor of the English department here. Come in, Mr. Taylor, come in. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. First of all, I'd, uh, I'd like to tell you how pleased I am that you agreed to stay and continue with your course. Well, I was reluctant to, but the faculty committee felt that I should. Uh, what happened was very unfortunate, but I don't see how you could have been considered responsible for it in any way. Well, I felt I was. It seems Miss Ross was a very imaginative person, very open to suggestion, which I should have realized. I don't think anyone would have realized it. I, I wonder if you could help me in a project of my own. If I can, I'd be very happy to. What's the project? My doctoral thesis, uh, which is a study of the dark tradition that runs through English literature and led to the Gothic novel. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Very interesting. Well, just how can I help you? Well, I've done a certain amount of reading in the field, but I've wondered if you could give me a copy of the bibliography you used for your course. Well, I'll be glad to. Unfortunately, I don't have any copies here, but I'll send you whatever I have as soon as I get to my office. What's your address? 21 Maple Street. No, huh? I'll get it off to you tomorrow. I'm very grateful to you. Not at all. Uh, you gave the same course at State last year, didn't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did. Uh, did you know Tom Wallace when you were at State? Wallace? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, was he a member of the faculty? No, no. He, he was an undergraduate on the swimming team. He died very suddenly near the end of the term. Oh, yes. Yes. I do seem to remember that. Was he a friend of yours? No, no, a friend of a friend. Well, I think I'll be running along, and uh, I do thank you, Professor Lansing. Oh, not at all. Goodbye, Mr. Taylor. Did he go? Yes. What did you think of him? He seemed like quite a pleasant young man, and very attractive. Mm hmm. Well, I'm glad you think so, because he's going to be our next. Oh? Well, you don't have to worry about that for a while. You've got another four months. Yes, I know, but I'm a little concerned about him. As you said, he seemed quite pleasant and very plausible, but he asked me some rather strange questions. What kind of questions? About where I'd been before I taught at State. Also about your young friend, Tom Wallace. You think he suspects? I don't see how he can. But we can't afford to take any chances. No, I suppose not. I... Wasn't going to mention it, but he acted rather strangely with me, too. He seemed surprised that I was up and around. Oh. That settles it, then. When are you going to do it? As soon as possible. Beth? Yes, Bill? I've been waiting for you. You want to come in here for a minute? I want to show you something. Of course. What is it? This. <gasps> oh, it's the mirror. The mirror Lansing gave Debbie. Uh-huh. That's what I thought. Where did you get it? I found it in my desk drawer about a half an hour ago. Well, how did it get there? Well, obviously somebody put it there. I was out all morning and I, I never locked my door. Professor Lansing? Who else? It's his. And the police must have given it back to him after Debbie died. Well, why would he put it in your desk? That's a very interesting question. I I think I can answer it, but if I do, you're going to think I've flipped out. No, I won't. Well, you should, because it's completely impossible. Do you know what a sending is? No. When someone who's involved in black magic knows enough and is powerful enough, to raise an evil spirit, he can send that spirit to destroy someone. Oh, no. You mean that, that, that thing that Debbie saw in the mirror that, that I saw out on the campus? Yes. And it's here now? In the mirror? No. But the spirit has to be guided to the victim. And in this case, it's being done with the mirror. It, it will go where the mirror is. I still don't understand, Bill. I... I can understand why he might want to get rid of you, but what did he have against Debbie? He didn't have anything against her, but there was something of hers he wanted. Her life. Her life? A 
You remember what I told you about Mrs. Lansing yesterday? Uh -huh. That while the story was that she was quite old and ill, she turned out to be young and well and attractive? Yes. Well, according to the grimoires, the, the books of black magic, when you raise a spirit, you can also make a bargain with it. Give it the life of someone else in exchange for some more time for yourself or someone close to you. Bill. I told you it was impossible. Well, I, I would have said so, too, a week or so ago, but now I, I don't think so. I think it's true. What are you going to do about it? Well, I've got to get rid of the mirror. Destroy it. No, no, I'm not sure I can do that. I'm going to act as if it were all true, all possible, and fight fire with fire. I'm going to get the mirror back to Lansing. Give it back to him? No. No, put it in his house without his knowing it. Well, how, how, how can you do that? I think I can. He has a class this afternoon. Yeah, but what about his wife? Well, she'll probably go out sometime. If she doesn't, I'll phone her. I'll give her a message that'll get her out of the house. Bill, I'm coming with you. All right, then. Come on in. How did you get in? The back door was open. You sure no one's home? Well, you saw his wife leave a minute ago. Yes. What do you want me to do? Wait here with the door open a crack so you can see out. All right. Well, where are you going? Into his study. You won't belong? I'm frightened. No, 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 no. I'll be back as quick as I can. All right. Go ahead. Bill! What is it? Oh, nothing. The clock startled me. Will you be much longer? No, no. Come in here a minute. You think it's safe? Yes. What is it? I hid the mirror behind the books on one of the shelves, but while I was here, I thought I'd look in his desk, and I found this box. What's in it? This rod. It's used for raising spirits. And that other thing that, that's all wrapped up? Yeah, I was just going to look at it. I think it... Yes. It's an Artham. What's that? Well, it's a, it's a magic knife that's used to control a spirit once it's been evoked. Uh, this is the Seal of Solomon here on the hilt. And it is all true, at least. Yeah, 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 it looks that way. Bill, you got rid of the mirror, so, so let's go. Well, just a second. I, I want to think. I, I don't want him to be able to do anything like this again, but I can't take the whole box. I mean, if I do, he'll know someone was here. On the other hand, I... Yes. I can take the R Well, won't that do the same thing, Bill? Let him know we were here? No, not right away. See, when I was here yesterday, I saw... Oh, there it is. A dagger. See, I'll wrap that up and I'll put it in the box instead of the R -thame. Well, what'll happen if he tries to use it? I don't know. Is it time? We said midnight. You are sure he's there? In his room, now? He has an early class tomorrow, so I would assume so. Now hold the box while I light the incense. Arnold, I don't like this. Why not? We've never done anything like it before. Twice, not just in the same place, but within a few weeks. We have no choice, Mia. He's suspicious. And if he goes on prying, asking questions... Yes. All right, Give me the rod. Here. Yeah. Pyor, wherever you are, hear me. Do you hear me, Pyor? With this rod and in the names of Dagerum, Amartet, Algar, and Algasna, I summon thee. There it is, Arnold. Over there, near the bookcase. I see it. Give me the Arthim. Here. Stay where you are. I hold the Arthim. I have another life for you. A man this time. He has your mirror. 
go to him and destroy him. Why are you looking at me that way? Why aren't you going? I tell you, he has your mirror. Mirror, the Artem is my Persian dagger. What? Quick, find it. If you don't, no. No, keep away from me. Please. Oh, my God, no. What time is it now? Quarter after twelve. Do you think he's tried to do anything? I don't know. And I don't know how we'll be able to find out unless... We... Oh, what's, what's that? It's a police car. It's going that way. Toward the Lansing house. But why? Let me see if I can find out. Hello, Security. Uh, this is William Taylor on Maple Street. Uh, one of your squad cars just went by, going over towards Willow Road. Do you know why? I mean, uh, you know, is there anything wrong? I... Oh. Oh, I see. Thank you. What did they say? They're not sure what's wrong. Someone on Willow Road called and said they heard... terrible screams coming from number 45... As if someone were being murdered. Oh, but, but, but that... Yes. Uh, their house. Oh, Bill, what are you going to do? Are you going to say anything? Well, what would be the point? Do you think anyone would believe it? Of course no one would believe it. Things like that don't happen. At least not today. Oh, people may have thought they were possible once. There are many medieval tales of men who tried to use the powers of evil for their own ends and were finally destroyed by them. As I told you, the tale you just heard was a work of fiction, completely imaginary. But I am reminded of what Shakespeare said. Why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Marion Seldes, Tony Roberts, and Phoebe Doran. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.